Okay, so everyone here, I'm sure, is very accomplished, and so when I ask this question, probably everyone will say yes. But here goes. How many people here have ever lifted up a car? You can just, just, put, up your, just put up your hands. No, nobody? Okay, I mean, it's a little disappointing, not a big deal. Uh, but here's a story of an Alaskan teenager who did it one day after school. So uh, this teenager's dad, Bruce Anderson, was outside working on the family car when it slipped off the jack and onto his chest, pinning him to the ground. His 17-year-old son, Riley, just home from school, heard his father's cries, and when he came outside and couldn't find a jack to lift up the car, he did it himself, took hold of the bumper, and lifted the two-and-a-half-ton car off his father. Now, when a reporter asked him about his heroic deed, Riley sloughed it off, saying that anyone in his situation would have done the same. Really? You or I would have lifted a two-and-a-half-ton car off someone? This sounds preposterous, but I'm going to talk about some research today that suggests that Riley Anderson just might be right. So what does it take to do good in the world? Superhuman strength helps for sure, but certainly increased self-control seems necessary. To free India from colonial rule, Gandhi fasted for weeks at a time, and to help the needy, Mother Teresa endured extreme poverty. In fact, you might say that heroes are really defined by their impressive self-control, or as I'll call it, their agency, their capacity for action, tenacity, and perseverance. Now, at first glance, such agency seems to be a trait stable from birth. So if you get a four-year-old and measure how long she can resist eating marshmallows, that time will predict how successful she is academically a decade from now. And so what does this mean for those of us who are born without such an impressive self-control? I mean, we want to help the world, sure, but a hunger strike seems out of the question when we can't even resist the donuts at work. I'm going to suggest, however, that we might have the order wrong. And it's not that those with agency can do good necessarily, but that doing good gives us agency. In fact, merely trying to help another person may give us enough agency, enough physical agency, to allow even the weakest of us here to lift up that car. Of course, you might wonder, how is it that doing good deeds can increase physical agency? Well, there's two psychological theories that pave the way. The first, self-fulfilling prophecies, and the second is embodiment. Now, many of you may be familiar with self-fulfilling prophecies already, but I think it's best illustrated with an example. Sir? In the, in the front? Yeah, you. Um, in a s couple seconds, I'm going to give you my mic, and I'd like you to tell me and everyone else here uh, a funny joke, OK? Uh, but, but before I hand it over, let me just say, it looks like you have a terrible sense of humor. But here goes. Uh, no. So you don't tell the joke, but the point is that me thinking you're going to do a terrible job actually makes you more likely to do a terrible job. And so the classic research on this stuff was done in a classroom where researchers randomly selected a few kids and told teachers that they were early bloomers with lo lots of latent talent. Sure enough, by the end of the semester, these kids were doing much better than average, and they didn't even know what was going on. In fact, it works even better when people do. So if I lead you to believe that you're a gregarious, outgoing person, all of a sudden you're acting more outgoing, dancing on tables, the whole lot. And so the idea with good deeds is that if I lead you to do good, then you come to see yourself as a little more like a hero, and then you begin to act like one with increased agency. Of course, acting more outgoing is one thing, and lifting a car is something else. So how is it that thinking of yourself as a hero can lead to physical effects? Comes our next theory, embodiment. So the mind was once thought of this ethereal information processor that could just as easily be implemented on a computer as in our brains. But recent research suggests that our thoughts and our experiences are tightly tied to our bodies. In other words, they're embodied. And this means that simply activating mental associations can have physical effects. So I'll show you an example. I'm going to show you some lists of words. There's going to be five words. They're going to be scrambled up. And I'd like you to make a four-word sentence out of each list. OK? So give me a four-word sentence. And as soon as you figure it out, shout it out. Who's the first? All right, yep, the family visited Florida. Number two? Let's play some bingo. Number three? 
scrolls were ancient. Barking throws people off. And number four, sky was gray. Pretty easy. OK, so now if I asked you to get up and walk towards the exit right now, you know what you'd do? You'd walk very slowly. How come? Well, let's look at these sentences again. And each of them is a word that we associate with old age. <laughs> That's right. Go bingo. Um, and because we associate old age with walking slowly, and because this association is embodied, reading those words actually makes you walk more slowly. Another example is the link between coldness and loneliness. If I put you in a room and make you feel socially rejected, and then I ask you to tell me the temperature of the room, you'll tell me it's much colder than it is. And that's because we associate cold and lonely and because we embody this link. And there's lots of examples, but the point is that our association between heroes and good deeds and agency allows this association to have physical effects. So with these two theories, the links go something like this. I lead someone to do good, they tend to see themselves as a little more like a hero, and that because of the link between agency and good deeds, they actually embody this. This may seem a little far-fetched, uh, but we can test this empirically. That's the joy of being a psychologist. And so in study one, I took 60 people and turned half of them into good doers by giving them a dollar and allowing them to donate it to charity. The other half of people, I simply gave them a dollar to keep. After this, I measured their agency, and I got them to hold a hand grip like this without the, without the spandex unitards um, <laughs> for as long as they possibly could. And the prediction is, is that just donating a dollar to charity should increase their agency. So here's the data. So in the control condition, those who just kept the dollar held the, weight, or the hand grip an average of 115 seconds, whereas those in the charity condition held it 20% longer, an average of about 140 seconds. Now, 25 seconds may not seem like a ton, but it can be important. So imagine a mountain climber holding onto someone's hand as they dangle over a precipice, or a little more boring, imagine being 20% more productive at work one morning. Right? 20% is a big deal. In study two, we wanted to replicate this effect with something that needs a little more physical agency. And so we did the same manipulations, donate the dollar or keep it, and then I had people hold a five pound weight like this for as long as they could. And what we found is that relative to the control condition, those who donated the dollar could hold the weight significantly longer, suggesting that just doing one small act of charity can really increase your physical agency. Of course, the question is, do you actually have to do the good deed? If this whole process is set in motion by simply perceiving yourself to be a hero, then maybe it's enough just to think of yourself as a hero. And so that's what we measured in the third study. So while people hold, held the weight, I got them to write a story about themselves. And in the story, they would write about themselves either getting some work done, that's our neutral condition, or helping someone, that's our heroic or charity condition. And again, what we found is relative to the control condition, writing about getting some work done, those who wrote about themselves helping another could hold the weight significantly longer. So this suggests that just thinking or framing yourself as a good doer can increase physical agency. And this means that if you want to work harder, for instance, you shouldn't focus on how much money you're bringing in on your job, but how your work is making the world a better place. So across three studies, it seems that there's power in both good deeds and just thinking of yourself as a good doer. But this hopeful message also has a dark side. <laughs> and it seems that both good and evil can make people physically stronger. How come? Well, think of villains. Historical, living now, fictional, right? These are people who also have increased agency, who use their perseverance and notable tenacity to achieve their evil goals. And so, if we associate villains with agency, it should be that just thinking of yourself as a villain should also increase your physical agency. And so in study three, there are actually three stories that people wrote. The neutral story, the good story, and the evil story, where people wrote about themselves harming another person. And what we found, sure enough, not only were the evil people stronger than the control condition, but just a touch stronger than the good condition. 
And so this suggests that there's both power in good and evil deeds, whether you're actually doing them or just thinking of yourself as a good or evil doer. But though there's power in both good and evil, there's lots of reasons to recommend goodness. <laughs> for one, for one, uh, it makes the world a better place. Right? That's why we're all here, after all, to make the world a better place. And for two, it has lasting consequences for happiness. So one study recently published found that just donating $5 instead of spending it on yourself can dramatically increase your happiness. But most of all, what this study suggests is that rather than bemoan the small amount of agency you were born with, you can actually increase this agency by helping others and by doing good deeds. And then you can use this increased agency to not only help others in return, but also achieve your own goals. So if you want to work harder at work, maybe first help out a coworker. If you want to finally run that marathon, then do it for charity. And if you want to avoid the donut box at work, then donate your change on the way to the office. But I think most of all what these studies suggest is that when something needs to be done, whether heroic or mundane, why wait for Superman to help when you can become him yourself? Thank you.